Warning. This fanfic contains concepts such as self-harm that may be triggering to some listeners. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm Here Written by Random Rider 001 On Wattpad You'd been having an awful week. Work had been piled on top of you, you were missing your family, and worst of all, your partner wasn't there to help you with everything. You'd been looking for a release for it all. You've tried friends, movies, food. None of it worked. That was when you saw the razor blade on the bathroom counter and had an idea. A horrible, harming idea. But an idea, nonetheless. Darby hadn't seen you in a while. There had been a lot of missions to go on back to back and he hadn't had the time to go home. He walked into the large apartment, expecting you to be sitting at the island, eating or on the couch watching a movie, as it was 9pm. He furrowed his eyebrows when he didn't see you anywhere in the main area of the apartment. He walked into the bedroom and found you sitting at the desk working on something. You looked like you hadn't slept in days, and judging by the coffee cups surrounding you, Darby realized that was probably the case. You hadn't noticed him yet, as you were so indulged in your work. Darby scanned up and down your profile, drinking you in. His eyes stopped on your arms, exposed from the short-sleeved shirt you were wearing, particularly on your wrists. There were deep, red cuts on them. They were scarred over, but they looked recent. He looked around the room, not seeing anything that could have been used to hurt yourself. He went into the bathroom to look, and saw a razor blade on the counter. Panic settled deep in his stomach, and he charged back into the bedroom. You started not having noticed him until now. But just by looking at the upset and almost sorrowful look on his face, you knew there was no point. He'd already seen. Why would you do this to yourself? He asked, his voice sounding sad and hurt. He took a step forward and gently grabbed your arms, gazing at the cuts on them. You explained your situation and what had been happening while he gazed at you with understanding, yet somewhat frustrated eyes. Oh, I had my phone on me through all the missions. You could have called me and I would have talked to you. I didn't want to be a burden or anything, you said your voice breaking at the words, burden. He hugged you and brought you over to the bed. <sighs> you could never be a burden to me, baby. You are worth too much to me to be a burden. He pulled you to his chest and with the sound of his heartbeat and his warm arms wrapped around you, you fell asleep feeling 100 times better than you had at the start of that day. It was exam week, and Kirishima knew you were stressed out. You hadn't been eating or sleeping a lot lately, but he'd assumed it was because of studying and exam stresses. He'd started to worry about you when you would barely come out of your room at nights. He shook off the feeling as he walked back to the Class 1A dorms. He opened the door to the common room. It was late and his classmates were relaxing in the common area. He walked to his dorm, wanting to shower after a long night of training with Katsuki. He decided during his shower that he would go and check on you. 
maybe study with you a little bit. He grabbed his backpack and made his way to your dorm. He knocked a couple of times and frowned when you didn't answer. He checked the time. It was midnight. You couldn't have been asleep, right? He gently opened the door. He did a quick scan over your profile to see how you were doing, typing on your laptop with earbuds in. Oh, that's why they didn't hear me, he thought. Even in black shorts and a t-shirt, you looked gorgeous. He smiled and walked over to your desk and tapped you on your shoulder. You glanced up and pulled out your earbuds. Hey, Kiri, you said quietly, hugging your stomach so that he could barely see your arms. What's up? He frowned, furrowing his eyebrows. Why were you hugging yourself like that? <laughs> Hey, cutie. I came to study with you, if that's okay. You nodded, your face softening a little bit. Yeah, sure. That's fine with me. You muttered. The two of you studied together, working out problems and study guides. You stretched, leaning back, with your arms above your head. Kirishima looked at you and his eyes caught on something on your wrists. They looked like... cuts? You noticed him looking at your arms and quickly brought them back down so he couldn't see them. Without saying a word, he took your arms in his hands and pulled them towards him, turning them so that he could see your wrists. His eyes saddened and his lips pulled into a deep frown when he saw the cuts that had scarred over on your skin. He scanned the desk and saw a razor blade on one of the upper shelves. He looked back at you with a frown, and you looked away, incredibly guilty. He knew immediately that you'd been doing this to yourself. He hugged you. He didn't know what to say. Why? That one word slipped past his lips before he could stop it. You explained yourself and when you finished, Kirishima, keeping his arms around you, led you to the couch in your dorm room. He pulled you onto his lap and rubbed soothing circles into your back, humming gently, lulling you to sleep. You'd felt happier than you had in weeks. Bakugo was sitting in your room with you, helping you review for your English exam when he saw the cuts. It was two weeks before the exams and he'd known you'd been trying to study as much as possible, so he decided he'd help you out. He was asking you about some dumbass grammar question when he saw you'd rolled up the sleeves of your sweatshirt. Your bedroom was dimly lit, so he thought his eyes were either playing tricks on him or that it was pen or paints. Nonetheless, it worried him. A lot. Oi, traveler, he asked, placing the papers aside. You copied his movements, anxiety and slight panic settling into your face. You hummed a response. Hmm? Can I see your wrists? Your eyes snapped up to him and he noted that your breathing got faster, almost confirming his dreading suspicions. He grabbed your arms and pulled them towards the lamplight. He ran his fingertip over the cuts. Some looked weeks old, while others looked about a day. He looked around your room and his eyes caught on something glinting in the moonlight. He stood and walked over to your dresser, finding a razor blade. He grabbed the blade and walked over to you, trying to keep his cool, and ultimately failing. Why the fuck have you been cutting yourself? He growled, sitting down across from you. He listened as you explained yourself, stammering. And before you say anything about me being able to come to you, I didn't want to seem clingy. 
I didn't want to be a bother or a distraction from your work. You said as you finished. Bakugo's face softened, leaving only pain and sorrow in his eyes for you. He was frustrated to no end that you hadn't told him before. Dumbass. He muttered under his breath. You glanced up at him, tears in your eyes. His breath caught in his throat. <sighs> Sweetheart, you should have told me. You wouldn't have been a bother or a distraction. You've got to start telling me about these things, babe. He said softly. Clicking off the lamp, he pulled you onto his lap and carried you to your bed. He turned you so that you were facing him on his lap and that you snuggled into his neck. He pulled away and took your teary face in his hands, pressing a small kiss onto your lips. He pulled you back into a hug and ran his fingers through your hair. I'm right here. Got it. That was the last thing you heard before you fell into a deep sleep. Happiness and bliss settling into your heart. Tokoyami missed you dearly. He hadn't been away from you. No, he visited you every night. He missed the bubbly and cheerful you that would make him smile even on his worst days. Instead, you'd barely been eating or sleeping. On top of that, your personality started to become more dull. It was exam week, so he understood why you'd be stressed, but when he asked what had been going on, you wouldn't tell him for some odd reason. He texted you, sitting at his desk in his dorm room. Hey, darling. Would you like to come and study with me at my dorm? Sure. I'll be right there. Tokoyami smiled at the small hard emoticon at the end of your response. In text messages, you hadn't changed at all. It was almost easy to overlook how you acted behind the screen. You appeared at his dorm wearing a white t-shirt and lavender shorts. He patted the spot next to him at his desk and you took it. You two studied together for about two hours before you started yawning. His eyes softened at your tired expression. You'd seemed fatigued before, but now you look like you would pass out at any second. You shook your head and looked at him expectantly for the next review question. You propped your elbow up on the desk, setting your chin on your palm. He was about to read off the next question when he noticed something on your arm, illuminated by the small lamp on his desk. Why in the world did you have cuts on your wrists? He set down the papers he was reading off of and took the paper and pencil from your hands, setting them down as well. He gently took your hands in his own and looked down at your wrists. His dreaded suspicions were confirmed. They were cuts. He looked up to you with sad eyes and realized you were looking away from him with an almost ashamed expression on your face. He frowned. You did this to yourself, he murmured, more of a statement than a question. You nodded once, deciding it was about time to let go of the charade in front of him. You knew and trusted Tokoyami, and knew he wouldn't tell anyone. Why, darling? Why would you do this to yourself? He said, his voice soft and comforting, gentle. He let go of your arms and pushed your face to the side so he could see it fully. His heart still skipped a beat. They're so gorgeous. How could they harm something so beautiful? He thought as he gazed at your sorrowful eyes. 
You explained your situation, why you cut yourself, why you were stressed, everything. He nodded and pulled you off the chair and into his arms, leading you over to his bed. Dark shadows sprouted out from his back and curled around you while Tokoyami held you close. He felt something wet on his shoulders and held you closer, realizing you were crying. I just didn't want to be a burden on your shoulders, you said, your voice breaking. He pulled away to look you in the eye leaning his forehead against yours. You could never be a burden to me. I love you, darling. But please, tell me next time you're feeling like this, okay? He said softly. You nodded, and he held you closer, humming tunelessly to himself. I'm always here for you, he spoke gently, and with that, you drifted off to sleep, all the stress and depression alleviated from your heart. <laughs>